If you have a shed or detached garage in your yard and you've ever wanted to add electricity to it, but you don't want to tap into the grid, then this video is for you. This is my new 10 by 20 Stormore storage shed that I designed and ordered online. I've decided to put it totally off grid by adding solar and battery power. And in this video, I'm going to go over all the specs and details. Now these two solar panels, each of them are a hundred watts and that is all I need to power my storage shed. I'll get into the specifics of that in a minute. Uh, these are made by New Power, and I have those mounted to this steel pole, which I put in the ground with some quick crete. Uh, and the mount is also a new power mount. It will accept up to 400 watts of solar panels. Uh, so I could uh, add more solar panels or actually remove these and replace these with larger panels if I wanted to go up uh, in size. So, but I found so far that for what I'm doing here, these are plenty enough for me. I'm also in sunny Florida, so I get plenty of solar. Uh, these panels are facing south. And they're at about a 26 degree angle, which is good for year round usage here in Florida. There's two ways that you can wire panels up when you have more than one. That's either in parallel or in series. Uh, for the reason of me having a, a longer cable run into the shed, I decided to go with in series because uh, in series you have less voltage drop and uh, you don't have to go with such a thick cable. This is 10 gauge wiring that I went with. If you wire these in parallel, basically you're wiring both of them back to your inverter. Uh, with them wired in series, essentially you connect the negative to the positive with one panel, and then the negative of another panel goes out to the shed, and the positive of the other panel also goes out to the shed. So this positive here is from one panel, and the negative is from the other panel, and then the negative and positive of both panels are connected together, and that is how you get in-series wiring. Uh, there are some drawbacks to in-series wiring. For instance, if you get partially shaded panels, that can cause some issues with uh, drop in uh, output. Also, if one panel were to fail, then both panels would fail together because you can't put current through the failed panel. So there are a few drawbacks to both. There's also drawbacks to running them in parallel as well. Uh, like, for instance, you have a uh, higher amperage, which requires a thicker gauge wire, or you will have voltage drop, uh, which you do not want. Uh, so the wiring here is solar wiring, has a nice coating on it. Uh, running it down in the ground through some conduit, uh, under the ground to the shed, and it is coming up through the shed right here. Uh, so I'll take you inside now and show you exactly where that's coming in, into. Here is where that solar wiring is coming up through the floor, and I have it running around the wall inside my shed, all the way up here to my battery unit. And this is my Blue Yeti Elite 200 V2. It is a two kilowatt hour battery unit, or 2073 watt hours, and it will output a max of 2600 watts, with a brief peak to 3,900 watts. So it should be able to handle most power tools. Now the reason I chose this unit is because the AC inverter, I intend to leave it on. I have a security light mounted on the front of the shed, so I wanna leave this on 24 seven. And as of right now, the making of this video, this is one of the most efficient AC inverters for this size unit that you can get. What I found is leaving the AC inverter on overnight with no other power draw, I lose about 7% of the battery. It's actually not too bad. So right now I'm charging at just under 100 watts and with the lights on in here, I'm using 130 watts. So right now with all the lights on, and we'll show you that here in just a second, I'm using more than I'm bringing in, uh, but once I turn the lights out, uh, that number will start charging the, the battery back up. So I have four outlets here. These are 20 amp outlets. The circuit breaker in this is a 20 amp circuit breaker. So all of these combined cannot exceed 20 amps of power. There are a few USB C's and two USB A uh, outputs here for you. If you want to plug in a phone or any type of device to charge, and there's also the DC output and then there's DC input. This is the solar coming in from those wires I just showed you. These are the MC4 connectors. I have a converter converting those over to the XT60, which is what this Blue Yeti takes. 
The XT60 connector is a little yellow connector. You may have seen these before. Thankfully, the Deloitte Eddy came with this converter cable. And plugging this in will allow it to charge. So this stays plugged in all the time. So when the sun comes up, it automatically begins charging the battery. So you may be wondering how I am powering the shed off of this Blue Yeti unit. Well, it, all the magic lays here in this power cord. This power cord right here single-handedly is powering all the lights and outlets. This goes out to a GFCI outlet, which I'll show you in just a second. The GFCI outlet is mounted on the outside. That way I have an outlet on the outside of the shed in case I need to use it. Uh, and also it is a GFCI outlet, so it is perfectly safe to be out there in this weatherproof box. So inside my shed, I had an electrician come out and basically wire it up for me. Uh, a couple light switches, one for the outdoor light, one for the indoor light, several power plugs all the way around the room here, a couple near the workbench, uh, one on the wall here, one on the wall there, uh, one on the wall over here, so outlets everywhere. Those are always on and always live. But I also had him add outlets up here for powering the lights, just to have the convenience of extra out outlets in, uh, in the shed. And so these lights are on a switchable circuit. They're LED, quite efficient. And of course, I can power them off right here if I want to turn these off. So I got these at Lowe's. Uh, they were fairly inexpensive. Up in the ceiling, I have a few smaller lights mounted just to light up the loft area in the top of my shed here and uh, also provide some light in here. So with all these lights on in here, there's uh, actually plenty of light. In addition to that, you see it way up there. There's a gable in fan that is an exhaust fan. I got that off of Amazon also. And that is being powered here by this outlet. It is controlled via this control panel, which allows you to set a set temperature to which the fan will come on. It is a 10 speed fan. And at the highest speed, it's pretty efficient. It only pulls about 20 watts. So the idea is when it gets really hot in here, that fan will kick on automatically and start to pull some of the heat out of the, the ceiling area up here. Uh, that's mostly because of the concern for, well, I've got a battery unit in here and batteries don't like getting very hot. So I want to extend the life of these. They're already going to get used and abused with a partial cycle every single day, just leaving the inverter on. So I want to extend the life as much as I can. So I'll let it run the fan during the day and only 20 watts isn't really going to do much to impact this. Again, I'm charging at about 180 watts during the day. So take away 20 watts, that should be the only thing that is running in here. So that should be good enough. Well, that concludes my intro video of my solar setup in my shed. Drop a comment down below if you want any more details. If I left something out, I'll be more than glad to provide those. Again, links are in the description below for everything that I've purchased. The total cost of solar, not including the wiring for the electrician, I spent roughly about 1500 bucks on the Blue Yeti, the solar panels, the mount, the metal pole, the quickcrete, and the wiring, uh, roughly about 1500 bucks. So it'll probably take a few years before I can recoup that cost. But uh, for me, it was a bonus because everything here is enclosed. I'm essentially running my shed off of battery power. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, go ahead and hit that uh, like button and make sure you subscribe if you have not already as I will be doing more videos like this in the very near future. All right, take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.